Belize Watch. Knowledge of the past, impacting the present, building the future. Drum making is an art. In this show, which aired on November 5, 2013, our Belize Watch team was in Punta Gorda, where they spoke with one of the most well-known drum makers, Emmett Young. In this edition of Belize Watch Revisited, we look back at that conversation. But first, we hear a word from our partners, Honorable Kevin Bernard, the Barry, and Shell Belize Limited. <laughs> We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Ondrat, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more, be less. In a town where dreams meet reality, where progress takes center stage, a transformation is underway. Get ready to experience a journey like no other. Introducing the long-awaited paving of Santa Familia Street and Tangerine Street. The wait is over and the future is here. Works have commenced and there is no stopping now. Under the visionary leadership of the Honorable Kevin Bernard, Orange Walk Town East is witnessing an incredible transformation. Honorable Kevin Bernard, a true champion of progress has made it his mission to enhance the lives of the community he serves. And now, in partnership with the Orange Walk Town Council and the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing, this dream is becoming a reality. This partnership signifies a commitment to excellence, a commitment to the people. Together, they are paving the way for a brighter future, creating infrastructure that will stand the test of time. Imagine smooth, well-lit streets designed to connect communities, businesses, and families. Santa Familia Street and Tangerine Street will become the vibrant arteries of Orange Walk Town East, pulsating with life and opportunity. No longer will we face the challenges of potholes and uneven surfaces. Our town is evolving with the Honorable Kevin Bernard leading the charge more incredible projects are on the horizon. From improved infrastructure to innovative community initiatives, the future of Orange Walk East constituency is looking brighter than ever before. Moving the East forward with Kevin Bernard. Get ready for a new era of growth and improvement. Together, we are building a better future for all. Orange Walk Town, where dreams become a reality. Shell V Power, with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. I'm with Emmett Young, and Emmett Young has a drum school. As a matter of fact, Emmett, you have made all these drums that I'm seeing here. Yeah, yeah. A lot of drums, Emmett. Yeah, so I am Emmett Young, originally from Gales Point, now live in Punta Gorda Town. Uh -huh. And I have the Maroon Creole Drum School here now in Punta Gorda. Maroon Creole Drum School. Jumps, um, drum school. Yeah, Maroon Creole Drum School. Uh -huh. Gales Point. Uh, is a maroon settlement that was established in the late um, late 1700s. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, runaway slave that uh, lived in Gales Point. So, you know, that is a place um, close, just before um, Gales Point, which is known as Runaway Creek. Um, in that that area there on, the, on, the, on that coastal highway, and um, where the slaves I think used to used used to hide out, right, and camp out, right. Yeah, they used to settle along uh, Runaway Creek and along the banks of the Manatee River. Yeah. That's where the slaves used to hide. And the way they used to sustain themselves was by fishing, farming, and hunting. Uh -huh. They used to exploit the sea by the way of dugout canoes. Okay. So you, you know a bit of the history there. Um, so share, share some, of, some of your knowledge with me, man. Okay. Well, um, the slave 
was brought to Belize to cut lagood, to extract the dye from the lagood tree. And what had happened after the British didn't have no more use for the lagood, they discovered the mahogany. So they bring a bigger workforce to Belize to um, extract lagood the for mahogany. timber. The, yeah, the mahogany, sorry, for timber. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's when they had the slave. They were living in a place in Belize city called Iboton. Mm -hmm. And the slave they was living in harsh conditions. So over a period of time, they plan a revolt. Mm -hmm. So it was around Christmas time, and it was between 200 to 500 slaves. Mm -hmm. They escaped. They killed five slave masters and escaped up into the mountain. Mm -hmm. And they settled along the Runaway Creek and along the banks of the Manatee River. Mm -hmm. They tracked across swamps and rivers so neither man nor dog could have find them. Uh -huh. I have been to the Runaway Creek area, and I have, there are some Mayan caves there. And I understand that these slaves even spent some time in these caves. You, you know anything about that? Well, my grandfather used to tell me stories that they used to use venom snake to guard their fields yes. and stuff like this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so they used to hang out in the caves. And the way how they settled on Gales Point, when they used to come out in the Dagot Kanuka, they used to make Dagot Canoe out of big mahogany tree and cedar. They discovered the peninsula. And so Gales Point was all sun. It didn't grow grass. And they used to go out there on weekends. That was after the slave was abolished in, they didn't, in, in Belize. So they um, used to go there on weekends, mm -hmm. like for breaks. And then finally they settled on that peninsula. Yeah, they didn't have to hide anymore. They could have gone and settled on the peninsula. That's what you're telling me? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your grandfather, what do you remember of your grandfather? It's, it sounds like you and him had, you had a good relationship with him from the stories you're telling me. Well, my grandfather, basically, all I could remember from him, he was always a farmer. And he would go um, paddle from half of the peninsula across the lagoon and then he would walk about three miles up to his farm. Okay. And then he, that's where he farmed. So when he come back, he would back the stuff to the water, put it in his dory, and then paddle like a mile across the lagoon back home. Mm -hmm. And he basically used to give most of the stuff away to people, to yeah. families. You know, he just sell a little bit, and he would make trade for stuff that he needs. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what I know of him. He was a very kind man. You know. What was his name? Um, Dexter Young. Dexter Young? Yeah. All right. Better known as Bradex. Uh -huh. Bradex. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bradex. And then um, it, it, he was your grandfather to, by your mother's side or your father's side? He was side? my grandfather by my father's side. Your father's side. Yeah. Your father was who? Randolph Young. Uh -huh. yeah. How that name? Yeah. He just recently passed away about a month ago. Oh, my sympathies. Yeah. But what, what, what do you recall now um, of growing up in Gales Point? Um, you said you, you, you did farming. Uh, what, what, what was it like doing farming and, and growing up at the same time in Gales Point? Well, um, everybody used to, when they bring the food, they would uh, trade. They, they didn't uh, worry about money so much. Uh -huh. If you have rice, I give you some cassava, you give me some rice. If you have pumpkin, we exchange like this. That's one good thing I remember of Gales Point. And also, very uniquely of Gales Point was the uh, fire sambai. They had the, the music when they didn't have no light, so this was a traditional dance of the village. Uh -huh. the fire the, sam fire sambai. Uh -huh. And that still go on in the village today. This is uh, typical of the Creole, it's Creole music that only play in Gales Point. Uh -huh. And so most of the families in Gales Point really are descendants from the runaway slaves, basically, um, from, from, from those days. Yeah, from, mostly from Igbo tribe. It was a big amount of the people was from the Igbo tribe. Now, did, did your grandfather pass on to you any knowledge about the Igbo tribe that you, that you maybe remember or recollect? Or have you done any research on your own? Well, um, my family was, was Griot, so I, I get the lineage of a Griot. So a griot is a 
is a French terminology in Africa. We are called Jala people. So the person itself is the book. We don't write. We keep a uh, historian uh, of the village, of families. And then we go out to parties and we would make up stories of the people. Good stories or bad stories. We know the family history and we would sing song about them. Uh -huh. So your, sorry, your, family, your family did that? Uh, yeah, because yeah. my family. grandfather was a drummer. Okay. So this is tradition that passed down. It's an African okay. tradition. So the, so, so the story was told by the, through the drums and the, and the music? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And the family, they, they know because you, know you know the family history, you know the, the village history. Uh -huh. Yes. And you inherited that? Yeah, yeah, so I'm a griot. Uh -huh. And you're trying to keep that alive, a griot? Yeah, and I, uh, I teach this tradition to many, many youths in, in Gales Point, the sambai, the, the fire sambai, the, mu the drumming, we have the sambai drum, this is called a sambai drum. Uh -huh. We had the, the bass drum, and then we have the cutter drum, that's the lead drum. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And no, no, uh, as a little boy growing up in Gales Point, uh, you went to school there, right? Yeah, I went to school uh, What Gales was those school days like in Gales Point? Well, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. We used to spin marbles and play tops. Yeah. And I noticed now the kids, them, they don't even know how to make top. Yeah. Yeah. You used to make and your own top? Uh, yeah, yeah, make my own top. That was a fun, fun sport. Oh. And also we used to race some uh, cycle boat. The, the kids, them, when I was there, I teach them how to to make the cycle boat. This is a little boat where you sail in the lagoon uh -huh. and you chase behind it. It's really fun. Okay. You used to play Caparucha too? I know familiar with that one. The <laughs> least stick. We used to play um, uh, Casa with cashew seed. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a little different. Caparucha <laughs> <laughs> sounds like something more Latin, not <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it was fun. It was fun growing up um, for, for uh, yeah. And what are some of the friends you re remember um, growing up with you? Well, uh, Ranal, Ranal, he always he passed away, but he was like one of the top samba dancer of Gales Point. He was a really close friend. We grew up together. Then you have Bumbe Andrin. He was a bass drummer. Yeah, he's still at uh, there in Gales Point, and from time to time. I see him, he played in my band actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, at what age you realized and it became um, plain to you that, that you were a griot that, 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 um, yeah, for your people? Well, um, like I say, my grandfather was a griot, so I... Oh, a lee boy then? I, from a lee boy, when I was like eight years old, I started playing the drum, but I would sneak out at night, because one of my father, one of my father, um, friend, he used to play, so I would sneak out through the window and go and hang out by his house because he always have drumming by his house. Mm -hmm. And then he would give me the maracas, the shaka, or he would give me one of the small bass drum to play, or a clave. A clave? What, 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 yeah, what? That's a two stick where you keep time with. Mm, okay. uh -huh. I, I know, I'm familiar with the two stick name, I remember yeah. you call it a clave. Yeah, it's clave. Uh -huh. And then I would say, man, I would love to play like you. And he says, you don't have to worry about that. You're going to be better than me. Uh -huh. <laughs> And then that prophecy came through, no? Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I learned to play the traditional music of Gales Point, and I play, I'm very versatile, I play different rhythms, I play with the, I could play the Garifuna rhythms, I know rhythms from many countries in West Africa, okay. and I also know some Cuban stuff and some Brazilian stuff, oh. rhythms. Cuban, Brazilian, uh, yeah. the full, uh, the full words. Yeah. No, no, you, you, you stayed in Gales Point until a year ago, from what I'm understanding. Well, actually, I've been living here now in uh, this PG area for almost two years. I was living two years in San Pedro, Colombia. In San Pedro, Colombia? Yeah. Okay, in the, in the heart of the Maya land. Yeah, I had the jump school. That was the first part where I set up the jump school when I moved. Uh, how was that uh, experience? It was it was uh, it was nice but different, you know. Yeah. But the Mayan they like the drums, so I teach some Mayan kids. Okay. I I have uh, one Mayan kid uh, that play with my band. He just went to England to study. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, what caused you to leave Gales Point? I'm not sure if we established the reason why you why you left Gales Point. Well, you, 
<laughs> well, basically, thing had changed, you know, um, and uh, it was time for me. I feel that that time for me to move on to another location and mm. pass the knowledge on to different people. Yeah. Mm. Did you play outside of Belize? Have you had the opportunity to perform outside of Belize, or? Yeah, I play in United States. I've been to many festivals in United States. I I um, been to 22 states in United States, wow. playing and traveling around, and I um, play in Mexico and in Guatemala. And uh, now you're staying home, or you still travel from time to time? Well, I haven't traveled out of Bel Well, I traveled just a little bit, but for the last uh, 13 years, I haven't go back up into the states. Uh -huh. But my utmost goal is to go study in Africa. Okay. with some of the masters, because when I was in the States, I studied with some of the masters from Africa. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's where I learned a lot of the West African stuff that I play. So taught myself, taught myself. So for the last 13 years, I've been teaching myself, mm -hmm. and also teach. Mm -hmm. I teach youths because I have a program called Drums Not Guns. That's a great program. That the, I, I like. I like hearing that. Drums, not guns. Yeah. Drums. Yeah. Let the drums speak. Right. Right. Speak the rhythm of your soul through the power of your roots. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Now. Um, you, so you spent the time in San Pedro, Colombia, and then you moved to this spot here in, in Punta Gorda. Yeah, because where I was there in Colombia was not mine. Now this is... This is yours. Yeah. Um, this is yours. And this yeah. area what, is, is just... Uh, we, had, we had to come along the Joe Taylor Creek. It brought me along a road, really, which was the first time I traveled on it. I didn't even know 
it was it, it existed. So you open up my my eyes to a new part of, of Punta Gorda. Yeah, yeah. And and it's nice because uh, it's closer to town, so it's easier for people to get to mm -hmm. here. Because it's from from town, it's on foot, it's about 14 minutes walk. Mm -hmm. On bike, it's about six minutes ride on bike. So, you know, so the tourists, they can come because we also work with tourists. I teach mm -hmm. tourists alike. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we could maybe start um, thinking about learning from some of these drums that you have here and the different types of drums that you do. I hope you don't mind sharing that knowledge with me to see um, this afternoon. Not at all, not at all. Uh -huh. That's my comfort zone. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I, I will sit here and learn from you all right, about, about drumming and, and, and the work that, that, that you do. And I must commend you, though, for, for the vision you have of teaching others and uh, talking about going to Africa, that's one of my dreams as well, to go to, to, to know Africa as well, right? So I'm happy to be able to, to, to sit here with you and, and learn a bit, right? So let's learn. You yeah, teach. so, uh, well, we have many jumps here. So I should start off with, with the um, Sambai Jum. Okay. Uh -huh. We'll do the Sambai Jum first. All right, so. But this, the, you need, um, okay. This is the big. This is the biggest drum, right? Now the origins of this drum, I'd like to learn about. The, the, the sambai drum is a. The, it's a dance by the Igbo tribe, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So the the, um, the sambai drum is the origin of the sambai drum. Come with the slave from Africa, and it was mostly played by the Igbo tribe. Uh huh. And um, so they had. Basically, two drum where we play. We have the bass drum and we have the, the lead drum. The lead drum was called the cutter, and then we have the smaller one we call the bass. And the cutter drum always tall. It was always a tall drum with a small head like this. And this was the traditional way how we used to string them up. Mm -hmm. Now I use the African method to string them up so you can get a tighter and sharper sound. But isn't this a, this is a, a very similar to the how you string this here like, as to, to a garifuna drum? Yeah, the, with with the pegs. With the pegs, yeah. Yeah. So, it's, so, so it's, because that, obviously the garifuna drum originated in Africa as well. Right, right. So it's a lot of similarity. Yeah. It's different, but you see the similarity there as well still. Right there. Yeah. All right. So, so this is the. This is a cutter drum. This cutter. is the lead drum for the samba. Oh, you play this one. So if you're going to play. The the lead for the, the lead for the sambai mm -hmm. go like this. I gonna me plantation for ask me kelly fake was me over. That's it, I me kelly me won't fair stick on wrong bone me. I gonna me plantation for ask me kelly fake was me over. That's it, I me kelly me I got me plantation for ask me kill if it was me over. That's it, I me kill it, me own for a sick ton young bunny. Me kill it, me kill it, yo. Me kill it, me kill it, yo. Me kill it, me kill it, yo. I got me plantation for ask me kill if it was me over. That's it, I me kill it, me own for a sick ton young bunny. Wow. Okay. So, so this is this is the um, sambai, the lead drum for the sambai, and. And you, you made that one yourself, have it? Yeah, this is made from um, cashew wood. Cashew? The cashew, uh -huh. cashew tree? Cashew tree. Okay. This is made from cashew tree, and the skin is goat skin. Okay. Uh huh. So, a cashew, a piece of cashew tree with goat skin as as, as, as the top here, and, and, and of course the cards and. Yeah, and the cards. These are um, professional climbing rope. So, that, that, that's, our, that's our first drum. Yeah, yeah, that's the the lead drum for the sambai dance. How you dance the sambai? Well, actually, the the sambai dance is a fertility dance uh -huh. that is done two days before the full moon, on the full moon, and two days after the full moon. Depends the energy. Sometimes this rhythm go on for five nights. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And traditionally, before we plant the crop, we would play these rhythms for good harvest okay. and prosperity. And also, traditionally, when the young girls come of age, this way they used to find a mate. It was a courtship dance. 
So we would, in, in the center of the village, we would have a big circle with a bonfire in the middle. It's always done by a fire. And then the, the songs, they are call and respond. So the drummer would start playing the rhythms, and then they start the song, and then one dancer would emerge in the center of the ring. And when she, he do that dance, he would choose somebody from around the ring. And then she took the position of that person and that dancer danced. And each dancer is trying to outdo the other dance dancer. And the male have a little bit different dance from the female. And sometimes they do flips over the fire and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So it's a very energetic uh, dance and rhythm. So the flips will be like completely yeah, flip, flips? Yeah, over the fire. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wish I could have seen that live. Yeah, well, um, Christmas, if you go to Gales Point on Christmas, we have uh, a two days festival uh -huh. in Gales Point where we do Brahmin. And always, uh, like some weeks leading up to the, the Christmas, they have somebody almost every night, if not every night. Well, definitely, I'll, I'll make sure I do that this time. Yeah, sure, and then I'm going to, I go, and go up there too. So we'll meet up there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this next drum we take out now, I met the this hour, which one is? So this is the bass drum. This is the bass drum. This is the low drum for the... It's the, small, huh? Yeah, it's always have a little wider head and, and shorter than the, the cutter drum. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So this would sound like... And this have an... Uh, um, the skin here is cow skin. Cow skin. Uh, and this is... Uh, Coconut chunk. This is made from coconut. This the body is made body from coconut. coconut. Uh huh. Uh, like a, a coconut tree, you talk about? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is a piece of coconut tree. Right. Wow. We make jump out of coconut too. My goodness. In fact, my first jump that I ever made was out of coconut wood. That was when I was 13 years old. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. We will learn more about drum making with Emmett Young after we take a break to hear from our partners, Honorable Kevin Bernard, The Barry and Shell Belize Limited. We are The Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Ondrat, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more? In a town where dreams meet reality, where progress takes center stage, a transformation is underway. Get ready to experience a journey like no other. Introducing the long-awaited paving of Santa Familia Street and Tangerine Street. The wait is over and the future is here. Works have commenced and there is no stopping now. Under the visionary leadership of the Honorable Kevin Bernard, Orange Walk Town East is witnessing an incredible transformation. Honorable Kevin Bernard, a true champion of progress, has made it his mission to enhance the lives of the community he serves. And now, in partnership with the Orange Walk Town Council and the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing, this dream is becoming a reality. This partnership signifies a commitment to excellence, a commitment to the people. Together, they are paving the way for a brighter future, creating infrastructure that will stand the test of time. Imagine smooth, well-lit streets designed to connect communities, businesses, and families. Santa Familia Street and Tangerine Street will become the vibrant arteries of Orange Walk Town East, pulsating with life and opportunity. No longer will we face the challenges of potholes and uneven surfaces. Our town is evolving with the Honorable Kevin Bernard leading the charge. More incredible projects are on the horizon. From improved infrastructure to innovative community initiatives, the future of Orange Walk East constituency is looking brighter than ever before. Moving the East forward with Kevin Bernard. Get ready for a new era of growth and improvement. Together, we are building a better future for all. Orange Walk Town, where dreams become a reality. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. 
Go well, go sell. So how, how does what's the song again? But then this one. So for the um, bass for the um, samba, I go like this. Pirate, go meet them gal a hololo. So the Aminati pirate, go meet them gal a hololo. So the Aminati pirate, go meet them gal a hololo. So the Aminati pirate, go meet them gal a hololo. Something about the drums, you know, you feel them drums and you hear them drums. You just actually feel it like you vibrate the whole year, you know. <laughs> drums are special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's magical. Yeah. I I say the drum is a uh, healing rhythm. Yeah. You know, because mm. my 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 drum group is called Emmet Young and the Talawala Vibration, mm. and Talawala, it's a healing herb. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good for cure amoebas, parasite, and even cancer. And Creole, you know, when they say Talawala, that means to dance. Mm. Talawala, yeah, or for Pearson, big, big too. Right, you know, right. Talawala, this with something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and so we play the healing rhythms. Uh -huh. the Talawala vibration play the healing rhythms. Okay. Yeah. Talawala. How many people are in the Talawala vi vibration? Well, actually, the 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 group varies because I work with uh, youths, like I say, two drums, not drums, and I teach them to make and play the drums, and then I train them till they get to a level where they could play. In the group, so most of the kids that you see play with me last night, they are my students. Okay. I teach them.
our average size of the group is like five people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it could be up to eight people, depends the shoka. We also sometimes have dancers. Mm -hmm. How long would it take you to make a, a drum like, like, like this lead drum and, and, and the bass drum? Like the lead? Well, one drum like this take me about five days. Five days? From start to finish. But it's all done by hand? All done by hand and carve. Uh, and have carving tools. You don't use a power saw or anything to take out the inside. I've ah. seen some drum makers um, use a power saw to cut out the, the, the inside of the of the drum. Yeah, the, well, um, these drums are a little bit different, so you uh, you can make cores, but you have to chisel out the, the, the inside okay. and make the balls, especially the djembe. Mm. What is djembe? This, this one is the djembe. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So, so different kind of drum. Though. Yeah, different style. Uh-huh. So, I, I love this. So, this, so these two drums are the Sambai yeah, these are the drums. Sambai. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Still playing Gales Point today. The Sambai drums still at play in Gales Point today, and the dance is still alive. So, if you want to see the Sambai dance, you go to PG. If you want to learn the rhythm, you can come here at the Maroon Creole Drum School. So you're saying that if you want to see the Sambai dance, you go to Gales Point. Yeah. Like said. And then if you want to, to to learn, you come here to PG at where? The Maroon Creole Drum School. Creole jumps, drum School. Maroon Creole Drum School. Yeah. And you can learn all about the rhythms. You can learn the samba and you can learn West African rhythms because I play various West African rhythms. You know, Emmett, if anybody they watch you, right? You know when they, when they tell me? They tell me, how can you know, say how to reach Emmett? Right? So how could people reach you? I mean, find you? Well, you, my, you can find me, my number. It's six six eight seven seven three three, and you can find me on Facebook. Once you type in Emmett Young, you're gonna find me. I'm gonna come up, and you're gonna see lots of drum on my page. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the Maroon Creole Jump School page. Okay. Every we have daily postings of activity that's going on. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, this 18th of October gonna be the official opening of the Maroon Creole Jump School in PG. So you can come. 18th of October? Yeah, going wow. to be the official opening of the Maroon Creole Jump School. Make sure Paul Mahong know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> so, so we could cover that. Um, no, what other drums are we looking at here? Well, we have, um, I don't have all my drums here, but I have, right now I have the, um, the Sangba and I have the Jimbe. All right, Emmett. So we, we have this drum you said is called the the sangba. Sangba, sangba. S a n g b a. Sangba. Now, what's the story behind this? Well, this drum here is originated from the Great Mali Empire. Mali. Uh huh. So M A L I, right? Yeah, Mali, West Africa. West Africa. Uh huh. And it's a family of three drum. We have the sangba. We have the kinkini and we have the junjun. Okay. And the three of them is called the Dundunba family. Dundunba. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Family. Dundunba family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have the low low one, the big one that you see me playing last night. Okay. And then we have uh, a smaller one on top, the kinkini. Uh -huh. And then we have the sangba. Traditionally, each one plays separate with a bell on top. Uh huh. Okay, a bell. What, what kind of bell? Uh, metal about, uh? bell, okay. like a cow bell. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And the reason for that is to create a different song, or well, I guess you'll show me. Yeah. So you have a whole ensemble, because uh -huh. each each uh, drum play a different part that work together. Uh -huh. It's partly written. Okay. Yeah. And, and 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 this is used at certain rituals. This is um, these drums, uh, or on special occasions, or what or what. Well, um, the. Um, Junjun, uh, the Dunumba family, and the Jimbe is played mostly by the Malenke people, the Susu people, and also the Bambara people. And just the Malenke people alone have over 200 rhythms. Mm -hmm. So you have a rhythm for every activity in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the rhythm for the full moon dance, we have the, the rhythm for harvest, we have the rhythm for planting. We have a rhythm for the shoemaker. Mm -hmm. So you must burn into this tradition to learn all this rhythm. Okay. But I've been playing the, the jimbe and the junjun now for over 16 years. So I know a lot of these rhythms. 
and the meaning of the rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, so what will you show me um, now? What, what, which rhythm will you be showing me? Well, like I said, the, the Jun Jun uh, is the family of the Jimbe and it's the bass line for the Jimbe. Mm -hmm. So I don't have all of them here, but I can show you how we play the Sangba. Sangba? Uh -huh. All right. So the Sangba, traditionally we have a bell on top. But since I don't have a bell on top, I use that to, for my bell time. That's like for your time. What a rich song! I love it. <laughs> I'm learning by, by this, this is this is great. This is a great experience for me, Emmett. I must tell you, I, I really enjoy sitting here talking with you. It's really a wonderful, wonderful afternoon to to, to be learning all of this. And, um, okay, so this is one of the drums. Yeah, uh, of the Dundumba family. Dundumba. Uh huh. So if I had the kinkini, we can put the kinkini on top. But I don't have a kinkini, but I have a second song band, so usually they have different range. Oh, so you play both drums at the same time? Yeah, so you can, you can also split the rhythm where you can work with two drums. So. song and and these drums are made from from what what wood so this drum here this song by here is made from emery wood em emery wood. emery this is made from emery okay. and the skin on this one is a uh, cow skin for the low song okay. uh-huh so the skins produce different songs yeah. the type of skin that you use but um is this sealed on both sides or am i yeah, seeing yeah, doubles? Have double head it's a dub 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 double head drum okay uh-huh and also you can play them in your lap okay. because we have a, a drum similar to this, just a little bit different shape called the gumbe. Okay. And that's also a Creole drum. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, I used to hear about the gumbe. A woman tell me, no fi go to Maslan. If you go to Maslan, get up and make your stand. When they jump and they shout and they dance and they sing, wine me sa gumba, wine me sa dunga night and day, wine me sa dunga all the way, wine, 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 wine me sa dunga, wine me sa dunga. A woman tell me, no fi go to Maslan. If you go to Maslan, get up and make your stand. When they jump and they shout and they dance and they sing, wine me sa dunga. Wine, Mr. Dunga, night and day. Wine, Mr. Dunga, all the way. Wine, 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 Mr. Dunga. Wine, Mr. Dunga. Wine, Mr. Dunga. Wine, Mr. Dunga. Wine, 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 Mr. Dunga. I guess you're a hard for learning. So, if you're teaching me to play this now, what, what will I have to do? What will be my first move? Well, basically, when I teach, I go from scratch, so I will teach you the basic how to hit the jump uh -huh. and how to make the ba the basic three sound, okay. which is bass, tone, and slap. Okay. Uh huh. So my first lesson. So my first lesson will be. Well, um, the the um sangba, the dunumba family is a little bit harder okay. than the the jimbe okay. because you need uh, to learn to separate the brain <laughs> with the bell. <laughs> No, no, this drum here is made. Uh, just this use. is also made from cow skin, cow skin, and this is a kuhun, kuhun tree. Okay. Yeah, the shell is made out of kuhun. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm. 
And that guy there is the Jimbe. That's the Jimbe. This one. Aha. Uh -huh. All uh, right, let me pass this over to you then. Yeah. And, and these, these things that you have on this, the edge, These yeah? are called Kishen Kishen. This is originally typical Africans. Okay. The lead drummer on the djembe, I usually use the Kishen Kishen. So uh -huh. you get a real metallic song. Okay. Uh-huh. The Kishen Kishen. Kishen Kishen. Kishen Kishen. Yeah. All right. So the djembe, like I said, the samba drum is the first drum I start learning on. So I've been playing the djembe now for over 16 years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the djembe is one of the most popular drums that play around the world today. Yeah. So once you say djembe, once pe professional drummer, once you meet them and you mention djembe, they always know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, this is a djembe. Yeah. Jimbe. Yeah, shaped like a narrow glass. Uh huh. And um, this is this is made from what type of wood you made this one? This is mahogany. Mahogany. Yeah, okay. made from mahogany yes. and goat skin. And goat skin. Uh -huh. Mahogany and goat skin. Okay. And and the goat skin. This goat skin come all the way from Africa. Oh yeah. Yeah, cause it's hard to get goat skin here. Uh -huh. But, but it's not a goat. The Nakron Belize. Uh, Belize. They don't have many goats. Mostly you see a lot of sheep. Okay. But the sheep skin not as good as the goat skin. Uh huh. So, goat skin from Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, the djembe represent thunder and lightning. Uh huh. Fire. And the the junjun, the Donumba family represent earth and water, surf. Okay. Uh huh. That's the bass line, and the djembe is the high sound. Yeah. yeah. I feel, I feel, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, man, <laughs> man, definitely feel it. We will wrap up our 2013 conversation with drum maker Emmett Young after we hear a word from our partners who make this show possible. Honorable Kevin Bernard, The Barry, and Shell Belize Limited. We are The Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita, Dibari. Get more, Pieles. In a town where dreams meet reality, where progress takes center stage, a transformation is underway. Get ready to experience a journey like no other. Introducing the long-awaited paving of Santa Familia Street and Tangerine Street. The wait is over and the future is here. Works have commenced and there is no stopping now. Under the visionary leadership of the Honorable Kevin Bernard, Orange Walk Town East is witnessing an incredible transformation. Honorable Kevin Bernard, a true champion of progress, has made it his mission to enhance the lives of the community he serves. And now, in partnership with the Orange Walk Town Council and the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing, this dream is becoming a reality. This partnership signifies a commitment to excellence, a commitment to the people. Together, they are paving the way for a brighter future, 
creating infrastructure that will stand the test of time. Imagine smooth, well-lit streets designed to connect communities, businesses, and families. Santa Familia Street and Tangerine Street will become the vibrant arteries of Orange Walk Town East, pulsating with life and opportunity. No longer will we face the challenges of potholes and uneven surfaces. Our town is evolving with the Honorable Kevin Bernard leading the charge. More incredible projects are on the horizon. From improved infrastructure to innovative community initiatives, the future of Orange Walk East constituency is looking brighter than ever before. Moving the East forward with Kevin Bernard. Get ready for a new era of growth and improvement. Together, we are building a better future for all. Orange Walk Town, where dreams become a reality. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. The base is, is, is right here. Yeah, the base is in the middle. Yeah. So you have, so you, <laughs> you have base, goon. Then you have uh -huh. the tone. That's the middle song. Uh -huh. And then you have the slap, the high song. Okay. Goon go pa. Goon. So the goon is flat. Man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> goon go pa. Goon go. goon go pa. That's jump notation, jump language. Drum language. Goon go. Goon go pa. Goon go pa. Goon for bass, go for tone, and pa for slap. And it's all in this one drum here. Yeah. One, this one. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow. I and come, I also. I don't ever can teach me drumming one of these days. Yeah. Sure. I also make all of these drums. I made them, and I also sell drums. So okay. that's how I maintain the drum school is by selling the drums, so I can continue uh, teaching youths, because the, the youths of Belize they don't have to pay the class; they are free. Okay. So I ta I charge the tourists, and they pay for the, the the youths them to learn. Okay, uh -huh. that's, a, that's a good thing. You, you're a hero, and I don't know if you realize that, but um, but for the, the work you're doing is, is amazing, and it's and, and certainly work deserves a lot of commendation. You know, you're selling, you're making the drums. The tourists, they buy the drums because they come and they visit you. You take the money you earn, and you teach the youth for, um, for, um, for free, basically, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they also, I, I give classes, so they take also jump classes. Uh huh. Wow. You know, so. How many people you have you to have um, learning from you, right? Well, now? actually, um, in August, we had a uh, two weeks uh, jump camp. The first week, we had jump making, and the second week, we had jump playing. So the, they make their own jump. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we had. Uh, Ten kids, eight of them make their jump, mm -hmm. and they get to take their jump home after the course. Good. The jump is Very theirs. Good. Very good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you, 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 uh, like for example, if you make a drum like this, what would a drum like would, would, would sell for? A drum, drum like this go for 600 billies. That's uh -huh. extremely reasonable. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, if you want smaller size, we make smaller size. So you can get a jump from $50 up to six hundred dollars, okay. different sizes and yeah, range. Depends on what you, yeah. What you, what you want. Mm -hmm. And and um, I know I was I was doing I was with a Garifuna drum maker, um, and uh, well I've been with several, but um, what I understand is that no two drums are the same, right? 
Yeah, they all have different sound. Yeah. Yeah, when so, you make so them. A, a drum is really a piece, of, a work of art. Right, right. Because you, you won't find, you might find similar songs, but not exactly the same songs coming out. Is that so? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah so, so, so really, when you're buying one of these drums, you're buying a, a work of art. Uh, yes. Yeah. Buying so, a piece of art. So do a commercial man. I mean, I mean, I will put it on for you. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, come to the Maroon Creole Drum School. Check us out. You can learn various different style rhythms. You can make your own drums, and you can find us on Facebook at Emmet Young. And you can find the Maroon Creole Drum School page. You can see activity that we post up very regularly. Uh -huh. And then what if somebody from the community, like myself, my old self, would decide, I want to learn to play a drum, so, you know? Do you have a class for older people? Because older people then could pay, you know? Yeah, I have class for all age, any age, from scratch. You never play music before, I can work with you. Okay. Well, hmm. I hope I could find some time. Because <laughs> really, I, I am fascinated by drums, all it, you know, and especially coming here and sitting here with you. I'm, I'm really impressed with the, with the job you're doing. Now, you have more drums, I noticed, uh, or you have shown me the, yeah, the main ones. I, have, I also have, um, this is not all my drum collection. This is only part of my drum collection. Mm -hmm. Because we also run a restaurant in town called the Food Cafe. Okay. And so I sell a lot of drums out of there since that is in town. And, you know, people can pass by. It's right on Front Street. If you're in PG and you're trying to find me, you can also find us at the Driftwood Cafe. Uh -huh. and, and what, 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 what do you serve at the Driftwood Cafe? What sort of food? We serve espresso. We serve uh, mocha. We serve shakes. We serve cappuccino. You mm -hmm. can uh, buy uh, fish tamales, vegetarian tamales. You can get burritos. You can get chili. So we variety, variety of different, variety of different, different food. foods. Yeah. Right. And it's on Main Street in, in, in Punta Gorda. Yeah. And my wife is the main chef, Jill Burgess, or okay. Jill Young, anyone you want to call her. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she makes all these things um, from scratch, right? Yeah, exotic food. And a lot of the food that we cook there grow right here on the farm, out here at the Maroon Creole Jump School. Well, I need to ask you for show me around the farm related too, you know, because uh, show me what you have planted so I could appreciate how how we could live off the land, basically, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, we've been producing a lot of food here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pumpkin, cassava, planting, chaya, okra, you name it, we have it here. And what we don't have, we're going to continue to plant. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these other drums here then are, are, are different. Um, um, some of them are the same, except we have we have this one here. You know I, mean? I can move out of the way. Move this one so this drum here is a Brazilian drum. Like I say, I play rhythm from around the world. This is called atibake. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And this is a Brazilian drum. Made from what kind of wood? Look like, this looks like it's joined, right? Yeah, this is made from slats, mm -hmm. and it's tightened with metal. Okay. At the back, they play the candomble rhythm uh -huh. with these drums. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay, and so, um. And this is um, a deer skin on the head. Okay. Deer skin. And what would the Brazilians use a drum like this for? They, they have the rhythm where they play different rhythm, but they usually play um, the candomble rhythm on this drum. Candomble. Candomble, mm -hmm. yeah. It's well, uh, it's like a, also like a fertility dance from the Aruba tribe. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. A lot of similarities, though. <laughs> Dada, we dada, we dada, oh, 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 So 
So that's Beautiful. a Brazilian Beautiful. rhythm. That's a Brazilian rhythm. <laughs> peace, peace. <laughs> Man of many talents, my brother. These here are conga, conga drums, right? Conga. Uh, they are commercial drums, you said. So these are. Yeah, these are made these in. Are made by, the, by this particular ones, or are made by. This. No, no, no. But you can you make can you make these? Um, yeah, I can make congas out of one one piece. This is made from slats. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's meaning and wood joined together, right? Yeah. yeah. But you can you can make the congas out of one one piece, carve it out, and then you just get the hardware made by a, a welder. What's the, what's the origin of the conga drum? Well, the origin of the conga drum was when the slaves come from Africa and they end up in a Cuba. It was many um, uh, slaves from different uh, ethnicity, but mostly from the Congo. They have some drums that they play in, in Congo, the Congolese style, and mm -hmm. they develop this style and they call it Congo. So it's it's mostly the style that they play more come from that side of, of Africa. Okay. Uh huh. So, come from the Congo itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the technique is, is the guy Conga. from the djembe. Uh -huh. The technique is a little different from the djembe to play. Right. So how, let's, let's hear some songs on this one. Then. Usually they work together. Oh, uh huh. Use two Double. you good, you know. Huh? Yeah, I try to learn as much as I can. Like I said, my utmost goal is also to go to Africa and study with the master there, because I know what's out there to learn. So, you know, Belize know about drumming, but when you see the African play, man, they take your breath away. So I had studied with some of them, so I want to continue that study. No, I if I would walk into your 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 drum school and ask you, Emmet, you know, I want to learn to play drums. What would you reply? What would be your your answer? Um, and, and and where would you put me to begin? Well, uh, if you never played before, I then never played before. then we're going to go from scratch. Uh -huh. You're going to get the basic information, and then we will build up from there. And what would be that basic information? That's how to hit the drum, and how to make the basic tree song, bass tone slap. Uh -huh. well, you, you don't mind sharing a bit of the basic information with me right now? Uh, well, up to you. If you're not, uh, well, yeah, I can. <laughs> are you going to are you going to hold the jump in the boon song? Boon, 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 boon. Ah, boon, 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 boon. Gundun, Gundun, Gundun. Good, that's the bass. Right. Now the tone, you're going to use from this much of the fingertip with the finger closed, really relaxed, ex okay. excluding the, the thumb. Mm. Go, 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 uh -huh. go, 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 Guru, 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 Guru,
Now, the slap from this much of the palm to the fingertip, excluding the thumb again, okay. making with a little bit the finger spread, okay. making the pa sound. Pa, 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 so that's basic sound. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you a basic uh, um, rhythm pattern mm -hmm. for a rhythm called Cuckoo from Ivory Coast. Okay. So they, they go like this. Nice. Basic, basic. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one part of the yeah. flowing with it because you know right, but, but right. it was good that's one part of the rhythm so you would be playing that part and i play another part okay and then they come together that's what makes the poly rhythm okay they, they cross each other okay. make the melody uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> It's a lot of concentration. A lot of concentration. I think I think we, uh, that's the part I, I, right. I need to develop the concentration. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's really good. That's why it's really good for the kids. Mm -hmm. and I have testimony over testimony where I work with youths, and it teach them discipline. It teach them self respect, sense mm -hmm. of purpose. Yeah. You know because they have to concentrate and focus. That's uh -huh. for sure. But I, I like that man. This a land. So this a land. I rhythm. Different rhythm, you can't you can kind of confuse yeah, yeah. you, right? I think I need to practice that. Right, right, right. Because whenever strong. you change, I okay, I need to change. So. Yeah. So yeah, this experience yeah. and this was real fun. You know, I, I would definitely like to come on one of these days and to say, okay, let me just spend a whole day learning this. <laughs> this is great. And so, uh, you know, you're never too old to learn. Right, 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 right. You're yeah. never too old to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but you know, I want to thank you for such an enjoyable e uh, evening here um, at your um, Maroon Creole Drum School. Okay, I want to thank you. For, I want to thank you for that for the for the great experience I've had here this evening, and and we spoke about the garden earlier, and and the, and the planting that you do, which you you said you did in Gales Point as a as a young boy growing up, which um, seems to have never left you, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one. Of, that's also like the drum is my passion. 
farming is also one of my passion. Mm. And, and, and what, 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 I, what I like is that the, the food restaurant that, that, that you have in Main Street, Punta Gorda, you tell me a lot of the stuff that is made by your wife is made from products right here that you grow right here in, 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 at the Maroon School. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And it's all organic grown, no pesticides or chemical we use. Okay. Organically grown. So would you, you wouldn't mind showing me some of what you have planted, right? Yes, I would love to show you. All right, stuff. Well, let's, let's move my brother. <laughs> they plant a lot of cassava. Yeah, we plant cassava and then we make um, cassava fries uh -huh. in in our restaurant. Uh -huh. Out there by Tide Fish Fest, we would have cassava fries as well. Cassava fries. Yeah. You have some other. This effort. is a little bit different from the chips. It's a little bit thicker, like you mm. eating French fries, mm -hmm. but it's other cassava. And that should be delicious. I think I've tried it before. Um, and it's definitely delicious. There are a lot of things you can do from the cassava plant, no? Yeah, yeah, you can make the cassava bread, bread you can make the porridge, uh -huh. the cake, Yeah. and you can stew it down in your coconut milk. Exactly. <laughs> That's my so favorite way. That's uh, the way to do it. And, um, okay, and what else do we have? And then we have, if you notice, the fence is, is um, it's also food, you know, that's chaya. Uh -huh. We make a, a fence out of chaya, so we can eat our fence. <laughs> we can eat the, the, the fence yeah. so <laughs> and let it grow back again. The border, the border line is, is um, definitely yeah. um, with, with edible. The, yeah, and also the uh, lemongrass, uh -huh. better known as fever grass. Fever grass, yeah. uh -huh. grass tea, nice, you know. I love fever grass tea. Uh, lemongrass. How many acres do you have here, Eric? It's a little bit under two acres. Two acres. But you're making yeah. good use of these two acres, you know, from what I'm seeing. And this is uh, obviously papaya. Yeah, that's papaya. Mm -hmm. So this is where we do the fire hard kitchen. If you know, it's still okay. on construction. We're trying to get everything tied up for uh -huh. the 18th. Uh huh. So this cassava grow right here. A massive this piece is... of cassava. <laughs> <laughs> is it a piece of fence? <laughs> huh? You mean like a root a piece of fence? <laughs> well, uh, that plant side of the fence. The chaya is the fence. Okay. <laughs> massive piece of cassava. Yeah. So you're going to that down later? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So this building here is where we do the um, fire, fire heart cooking. cooking. We do um, cooking classes okay. on fire heart. On fire heart. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. Cooking classes on fire heart. Uh huh. Right. Fire right. heart food, nice, you know. Yeah, it's the best. You know, because it, the, the the smell of the is it because the smell of the wood stays in it. Um, why it's so nice. Yeah, I get the smoke. That smoke give it a flavor. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so rich, man. Fire heart cooking. And you, you could boast and say, hey, cook on fire heart. Come on, enjoy. And, and that's the whole way of cooking as well, the whole traditional Right, way. right, right, yeah. And leave it a cocoa, no? Yeah, the cocoa. So this, this is going to be the dining. We're gonna, that's where we're going to serve the food. Okay, so you're going to clear this up? So and this is clear up and... Uh, uh -huh. This is where we're going to have a dining. So dining. it's still on a, a construction. Okay. Still it's on construction. Very good. Yeah. And, and and I could see you're still working on the kitchen as well. So. Right, right. Because right. we are served uh, beer for the guests and and food and local wine and tea. Oh, you make a wine too? Yeah, I make um, berry wine, uh, cassava wine, I make grapefruit wine, cashew wine. You keep very busy. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> all around that. All around that, entrepreneur. Right. Um, how, many, how many children do you have? I have one, one daughter. One, one daughter. daughter, and she's 12 years old. Okay. <laughs> and then you live here as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my house. Oh. And we run on the grid. It's, we have solar panels, that's how we get our electricity. Oh, and solar and rain water. There is no electricity. Yeah, behind. behind here as yet. So, and we also run and collect rain water. Mm -hmm. so a lot of cassava. We got cassava here again, to the back yonder. Yeah. Sugar cane way down to the back yonder. And very good. Yeah, so this is uh, where we make the jumps. We have many um, wood here. Mm -hmm. We have cedar and we have uh, bastard mahogany and mahogany stumps, mm -hmm. coconut. But a bastard yeah. mahogany, for some here, they say, oh. It's a tree where they call banak. People call it banak. Uh -huh. And around here they call it bastard mahogany. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bastard mahogany. All right. So looking at this now, Emmett, you know, you know, seemingly you don't use a chainsaw like, like yours. 
Well, I, I did use the chainsaw a bit to make cores, but then we have to hand carve you and chisel it out. And chisel out all of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the, the, you just put the saw in to make the cores. And yeah, the... and then we have to chisel it out. That just makes the work a little bit easier, but you still have to shape out the bowl with the, the spoon gauge and the draw knife and all of that. So you don't cut out the middle of it and use for something else? Or no. For another smaller drum or something? You got to, you got to um, cause the, the, the kind of shape. That we well, make because of the shape of the drum, yeah, it makes it difficult. To yeah. 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 So, I mean, what is your what is your philosophy in life? What 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 what, what drives you? What what what's inside Emmett Young? Well, um, you know, what drives me? My philosophy: once you do good in life and you stay busy, you know, you're going to live a long life. Because hard work don't kill no one. Hard hard work make you healthy and make you live long. So. Oh. You know, that and and you know it's just good for your soul. Yeah. So yeah. work hard, but you have to have more vision, right? And when you work hard, you you must have more vision as to where you want to go. And I can see clear that you know where you want to go. Well, um, I I feed my belly and I feed my soul. So when I when I uh, work and sell the stuff that I sow, like my craft and stuff that feed my belly and when I work with the youths and teach them and see them striving that feed my soul so that's my drive mm -hmm. Very yeah good. Any, anything Emmett you'd like to tell your, your fellow Belizeans well one thing I would like to tell my fellow Belizean is plant the land because we need to go back to the earth it's healthy and it's good for the soul we eat we eat what we grow and that makes us live a long life. Yeah, definitely. Well, let me tell you, I want to thank you so much for having me here at the, the Maroon please. Drum School. You're welcome, and brother. <laughs> certainly, I enjoyed my visit here with you, man. And, and, and I, it was a nice afternoon. Thank you for making it so delightful. And I definitely have to commend you because I've seen the background now. We saw you playing at the, at, at the Tide function last night. And we have some, some, some footage of that which we're going to show. But then to come and see what really is behind all that is amazing. You're a good Belizean and thank you so much for You're welcome, bless for, up. Peace, peace. For what you do for our country. Peace thank you and so blessings. Much, all the best. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Belize Watch Revisited, where we look back at some of the stories we've covered over the years. Belize Watch. Knowledge of the past, impacting the present, building the future. Celebration time. It don't matter what part of the Jew they come from. You that you and me that me. But guess what? All are we the one.